Welcome back, everyone. Another week of Taurus Talk here at SG Taurus. I'm your host, Matt LePan. This week, we are very excited to have on someone who is a very familiar voice on the podcast. That is Doug Little from Pazerware. Doug, welcome back. We haven't talked to you in a while, but we're excited to have you back. Great. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate you guys having me on. Now, we've talked technology in the past, and we're going to do it again today, but with a little different twist. Today, we're talking doomsday and technology. And now, that probably perked up a lot of folks right there. Some hair stood up on the back of the neck hearing doomsday. But before we get too far into that, can you just kind of reintroduce yourself to folks who either haven't heard from you in a while or might be new to the podcast? Yeah, thank you, Matt. So Pazer is the company that my partner Joe and I founded a little over 10 years ago now. And we founded it to bring technology into the HVAC space. We've both been working in technology and in payments and such for many, many years. In fact, if uh, any of the, any guys out there, a little gray hair on the side of your head, you might remember the mobile speed pass, which was the little wand you waved at the pump, turn the gas pump on, you pump your gas, you drive away. It was the first virtual wallet, right? Joe invented that when he was working at mobile, which Exxon bought them. Joe always says, hey, I don't own the patent. That's why I'm still working with you, Doug. But he would be <laughs> retired if he, you know, so we got the opportunity to work together. And um, I've been working in and out of the contractor space now for uh, roughly about 20 years, trying to work on this implementation, recognizing that technology is coming, it's here, it's growing, it's getting faster and faster every day in the adoption. We put together Pazerware is our product that's in the space. It works for basically mostly service contractors, add-on replacement service contractors and such, but we have many mechanical companies as well as, as customers. But think of anyone that has to dispatch a crew out to the field and manage that crew and manage sales and presentations and financing and payments and back-end reporting and all those things. Pazerware has all the features to basically do the workflow of an HVAC contractor, and that's helping our contractors drive to greater efficiency across their business on many aspects. Good team of folks here. We've grown, as I said, Joe and I started the company 10 years ago, literally above his garage. You know, it, we, he had a nice, it's kind of like that, that playroom above the garage. So we weren't like sitting up there in rafters or anything. You the know? old Brady that, Bunch that, room, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. The old Brady Bunch room. Good one, Matt. Yeah. We started there and, you know, growing the company. Now we've got 170 employees are all headquartered here out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And Obviously, the focus for most of our folks is technology in the HVAC space. But why is it important for our dealers out there, the owners, the CEOs, the decision makers, to pay attention to how technology is influencing all industries when it comes to growing their own use of technology? Yeah, if you think about anybody listening right now can probably name an industry where technology made an impact, right? The traditional one, you think about the manufacturing. So think about Ford, right? Manufacturing, you know, trucks and cars and such. And they brought in technology, brought robots in to kind of start. Then they brought technology in. And what did it do? It helped them produce cars faster, cheaper, more accuracy, better quality. All those things happened to them, right? And the HVAC industry is going under that similar change now. What changed, right? The introduction of the 5G network has really enhanced mm -hmm. the mobile networks, right? So if you think back, what made Amazon possible, right? They started selling books over the internet and took out the brick and mortar, you know, Borders Books and all those companies are no longer around, right? They were a fixture in every shopping mall across America. They're gone now. That was the internet that did that. People could order books from home. And now they're into groceries and all types of things. They're disrupting a lot of industries right now, right? Not just Amazon alone, but other companies like that. That sort of disruption fueled by the 5G network, we now have the internet in this space, right? When we were launching Pazerware, and we started 10 years ago, and we were working hard. In fact, one of our board members, um, he was sat on the board with Verizon for a period of time, did some projects with them. So we had some insight into what was going on with the networks. So gave us some encouragement to, to continue. But if the network was never built, Pazerware wouldn't be possible, right? You'd have contractors with their folks out in the field and they wouldn't be able to connect with them. Well, the 5G networks allow that to happen. The cellular networks now allow that to happen where you can run your business remotely, stay in touch with all of your folks out in the field, transfer information back and forth in real time, and 
basically not lose connection. And that's what's fueling this rapid growth all of a sudden, where if you were sitting around 10 years ago, you weren't worried about it. Technology really never delivered. Now that network is here in the HVAC industry. When you think about the doomsday clock, I had a fellow say to me the other day, yeah, but it doesn't go to zero. Like there's a <laughs> point where you need technology to compete in this marketplace. But he said, yeah, but it doesn't go to zero. And I said, okay. I said this to him, I said, let's consider the taxi industry. A little company called Uber put a hurt on that, didn't they? Right? Yep. Like, I mean, I'm 52 years old. I remember being at a party and calling a cab. I'm like, I hope the guy shows up. Like an hour and a half later, your friends are staring at you going, aren't you going home yet? You know, <laughs> you're like, waiting, they pick me now. It's Uber. It's right on your phone. Guy drives over in five minutes and off you go. Like, it's just so simple and easy. That was purely technology that did that. Disrupted the whole market. And if you were a taxi company, like, they didn't see it coming, you know? And all of a sudden, there's not as many of them around. So that's why we're passionate about getting this message out to the HVAC industry because we care about all these contractors that are hardworking folks doing a good service for their customers and stuff. And we want to see them thrive and succeed in the future. What are some of the ways that technology in the HVAC market itself now, as we kind of hone in on the HVAC market, what are some of the ways that it will help these contractors grow and prosper? One of the biggest things if you're using technology, right, you get real-time reporting on your business. So I always call it, I'm a little old-fashioned, I call it, let's take a look at the cash register. How are we doing today, right? And then how are we doing midday? You might look at, it at the end of the day. How are we do today? What were our sales? With the cloud-based modern technology like Pazerware, your reports are updating in real time as your folks are executing your work out in the field. So at any given moment, if you're an owner of an HVAC company and you want to say, how am I doing today? How'd I do this week? How'd I do this month? How'd I do this quarter this past year, right? You can see it, right? Just change a couple of filters in the software and the reports generate. So you know who's selling what, what products are selling, what loans have the highest close rate on this unit versus others without financing. And you can start to really get a gauge on your business and Look at your accounts receivables in real time, right? We did this work. Did we get paid for that work today? It's accelerating payments. We have integrated payments and financing in our platform, which helps contractors get paid literally right on the spot. Here's a stat for you. We ran a study. It's about a few years back, but it had over 2,000 respondents. It took the contractors in the HVAC space 54 days on average to get paid on oh, invoices. So rough. Because they would, yeah, they would do the work. You know, the technician would shake the homeowner's hand and say, we'll send you a bill. Then he'd take his chicken scratch back to the office, right? No offense to guys with poor handwriting, right? But the back office folks chuckle when you say that. They've seen it, right? Mm -hmm. They take that back and they have to create an invoice, maybe in QuickBooks, and then mail that out. And the homeowner gets it and the homeowner has to respond and put a check back in the mail and send it back out. Well, the homeowner's already moved past checks. Like if you're, if you're 35 years old or younger, you're like, what's a checkbook? right? I don't have one. How do I write this guy a check? How do I pay him? Then you call him. Can I just pay you and pay you on my website? Oh, we don't have that. You got to write us a check, send it in. They're like, well, I guess I have to go to the bank, get a cashier's check to send you your check, right? Like stuff like that's going on all the time, right? Now with our software, it's 54 days on average in the study to get paid. Using our software, the contractors are getting paid an average of 19 days. So 30, I think it was 33% are getting paid the same day as the job is performed. That means they're swiping that credit card, they're imaging that check right in the home getting paid. Then 55% um, are paid within 10 days. So some folks are still invoicing, but they have the ability to email the invoice to the homeowner. The homeowner has a pay now button off that email off their phone and they just pay off their checking account, right? Or whatever it might be, or with their credit card. And then there's still some invoices that are running longer, right? It takes more time to get paid, but 54 days versus 19 days, it's three times faster, you know? So when you get cash into your business that much quicker, it fuels growth. When you're going to get a loan from the bank and you've got cash in your business and you turn your business in 19 days versus 54 days, that banker likes that a whole lot better, right? Better interest rates on your loans, more capital afforded to you, all those types of things start to happen and it fuels that growth. And just to speak to the general efficiency, it's really the transfer of information in real time that makes that happen. So I'm a technician, I'm on a job, I don't have to finish the job, go to the gas station, call in, say, hey, where am I supposed to go next, right? 
I just do my work and then I finish the job, I close the job, up pops my next job, gives me turn by turn directions. It has the picture of the house. It has the information that they're a repeat customer, like has everything we've ever done there in the app for me to look through. Okay, so we already replaced that part. Seems this is out again, so it's probably not that. It must be this. So I can deduce the problem faster, which speeds me up on the job. And we find that happening to the tune of basically on average, every technician gets to at least one more job per day when companies adopt the software. Some are, we have well, our best technician. He works out of Montgomery, Alabama. He gets to 7.2 jobs per day in an eight hour day. Wow. They got really efficient. Like they're using route optimization and that guy's moving, you know, and he's moving through his jobs really quick. So if you get your folks to one more job per day, we even have a calculator on our website. It's like, okay, how many folks do you have in the field, right? What does one more job per day mean? When you run the average job through, it means you're making $86,000 more. If you have four technicians, you're making $86,000 more in revenue per month, right? And say, you know, you got a 20, 30% net margin on that, you might be making an extra 25 grand of net revenue, you know? So all that efficiency means to more jobs per day per tech. And typically then there's all the, the stuff that the technology offers now with proposal tools, with embedded financing, you can close that right at the kitchen table. There's no longer like, well, let me go back and get your approved for financing and call you back, right? Homeowners approved right there. Heck, if you have it in your own inventory, if you can look it up, you can order it right away and schedule right from there. So, hey, we see it's available. We'll be out here in three days, schedule it right at the kitchen table and done. Just makes that business super efficient. Like you said, the efficiencies are the big thing. Everyone wants to work quicker, homeowners wise. You're, you know, the end user, if you will, for the folks listening. They want to work quicker. They want you to be more efficient. They want you to have the answers in real time. And with technology, like a Pazerware, you have all of that right in your hand, right in an app that can be used anywhere. Like Doug said, yeah. the 5G markets. And you're, it's not unreliable anymore, right? Even call it five years ago. It was tough because you didn't always have service everywhere. That's changed so rapidly that now all these efficiencies are right there and the use of technology is making you more efficient and more attractive to the end user. It's making you quicker. Yeah. It's you know giving you a better share of market and it's allowing you to meet the demand of the homeowner that we all know, call it in the past two and a half years since, since all of the, the COVID stuff began. Well, everyone's gotten quicker and more efficient and the homeowner is more demanding this technology yeah. allows you to meet that demand. Yeah, you're exactly right to talk about the homeowner, Matt, because it's the customer experience, right? They demand it. They want that text message. You're on mm -hmm. their way. They want that. Oh, you got an appointment tomorrow. Confirm it. Click. They don't want to pick, get a phone call. Heck, nowadays, so many spam calls, you don't know who that is calling. Right. You know? And you just get the text message, confirm your appointment tomorrow, click, done, right? Then, I mean, here's another scenario that's, uh, again, Pazerware is built from, from us interviewing and then gaining thousands of contractors as customers. So guys are great at telling us what, they, what we need to build, right? They give us some great ideas. And one use case we sought to eradicate was that I deduce what the problem is. I tell the homeowner, here's what your issue is. And they say, okay, what's the price? And I say, well, hang on. I got to go out to the van and I got to call back to the office. And then you proceed to sit in the van for 20 minutes in the middle of June, waiting to get the call back to say the price that you need to go in and then tell the homeowner, right? And the homeowners in their house, like you're talking about, Matt, they're demanding, they want things fast. They're like, why is this guy sitting out there in the street? What is he doing out there? Mm -hmm. They start to think, what is he, lazy? What is he doing? He, why is he back in here? I got to get going, you know? I don't have time for this. So we eradicated that use case with, you know, the, the if you're the owner of the HVAC business, you could build your price book. So you can control your pricing. You can then allow your folks to display that pricing to homeowners reliably because you set the price. They don't have a way to change the price, mm -hmm. right? So you can put in discount things, stuff like that if you want to, but you preset those too. So you can allow your folks to present the solution and the pricing right there. So they come inside now and they say, hey, here's the problem. Here's a couple of options and this is what it's going to cost. With all of that technology, it brings us to the doomsday clock. I feel like there should be 
thunder and you know dun, 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 music going on there tell us yeah. about the doomsday clock because i don't think a lot of contractors have heard this yet and they need to so everybody out there turn turn up your speakers turn up your headphones right now because this is the most important stuff right here yeah th- this is a provocative thing in fact i get a lot of pushback on it because people you know they don't, they don't want to believe it they think my timing's off whatever it might be I always say things to people where they say, you're 10 years ahead of your time. I'm like, yeah, but I'm here right now. Mm-hmm. Like, how can I be here if I'm 10 years ahead, right? No. What? But if so here's, here's with the doomsday clock, right? So if you've got contractors using this modern day cloud-based technology with all the efficiencies that we just spoke of, they're getting to one more job per day per technician. They're having higher tickets, better close rates. All those things are happening as they're out there with a good consumer buying experience and such, right? It's fueling the growth. We ran some information year over year. We've sort of been tracking the growth of contractors. Now, inflation this year has definitely impacted it, right? But with inflation baked in, previously when we ran this, we saw 24.4% growth in contractor revenue using cloud-based software, right? Versus Contractors typically grow, they say, anywhere from 2 to 6% year over year. So inflation in that year was 4.2%. So we're looking at like, if I'm growing 6% without software, I'm growing 24% with software. Take inflation out, I'm growing 20% versus 2%, mm-hmm. right? And this latest year, now inflation, when we ran the study, was like 8.5%. I mean, unfortunate that that's going on, but it is. But the contractors, they grew 38% this year, wow. year over year in their top line revenue. Also, not just for inflation, we saw a rapid increase in the number of jobs they performed and the number of invoices they've invoiced out to their customers as well. So that group on technology using cloud-based software is growing anywhere from five to six times the group that has not adopted software yet. So to pause for a moment there to just let everybody just understand that, right? That is one group growing faster than the other group at the rate of, let's just say, five times faster, okay? Now you consider the marketplace. Think of the neighborhoods or the town or the city that you service, right? The market is finite, meaning there's only X amount of homeowners, X amount of jobs you can perform in that market. So if we made an example and just said there's a 1,000 jobs to do in this market in a year, and there's two companies competing in that marketplace, right? So the one company growing, doing five times more jobs per day than the other company, the company with the cloud-based software growing five times faster than the other one will eat that market share up, right? They will get to many more homeowners than the contractor not using software because he's simply growing slower, he's less efficient, right? Maybe he doesn't get run out of business. Maybe he still has a small business that he services, because he's got loyal customers, but the other company is going to grow. So now we have to expand that across the entire United States. And you say, okay, there's one group of contractors, albeit they're smaller than the other group right now, right? So we ran two studies this year, and I was shocked to see the data came back with the same numbers. We ran the first study. It was about 747 participants, I think it was, 29% of the participants had adopted cloud-based software, 71% had not. So then we ran a bigger study with over 5,000 participants and the numbers came back the same, 29%, 71%, to which I was like, that seems odd, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of, we sure we got the data right? So we rechecked it all and sure enough, 29% of the market has adopted software, 71% have not. So that's where we start to get to the doomsday clock. So I asked the question, well, I've been doing this for 10 years and I know there's, Folks that have worked out there as territory managers for 25, 30 years, they've heard the promise of technology and everyone thinks, well, it's probably going to be another 15 years before this ever really makes a splash or happens in our marketplace, right? Which brings me back to the taxi organizations thinking, ah, Uber, some little app, what are we worried about that for, right? Right. And maybe you have Lyft. Now there's two companies, Uber and Lyft, right? They're taking up the market share in those markets, eating it up. So that's what you could see happening to the HVAC industry, this one group grows so much faster than the other that when do they gain the majority of the market share? When do they control 51% of the market share? If you run the studies and you run the growth, 
right? So just run the two groups side by side on growth, one taking market share faster than the other. It's two and a half years away to where the folks on technology now control 51% of the market. And then the doomsday clock, the, the model itself runs to zero, actually runs to negative if you run it all the way through. If there's any folks out there that are Excel mavens, whatever, want to check this data out, right? But it's seven years away to where it hits zero. What that says, in seven years, the market will consolidate. The market will be 100% adoptive to technology. So if you're a a young fellow right now working at an HVAC company and you have a dream of starting your own company someday, if you do it seven years from now, you're going to have to have technology in order to compete in the space. So that's sort of where we call it the doomsday clock is sort of the wake up calls that I'm trying to say. And it's a little provocative. Some people push back on me right now because they don't want to believe it. I've been hearing this for years, Doug. Why are you saying this now? It's like, well, the I've seen just seeing the results. I'm just running data and I'm seeing rapid growth in one group, slower growth in another. Well, and we all know the markets are finite. There's only so many folks that live in Boston, right? There's only so many folks that live in Connecticut. There's only so many contractors that can service that marketplace. And the ones growing faster than the others will be the ones that survive going in the future. And that's where the provocative piece is. It's not 10 years away. It's two and a half years away from where they control the majority. So even if I'm a territory manager servicing these customers, like a little bit of that consultative type of thing, we got to bring this message to your, your customers to say, hey, you got to be considering this because, well, you want them buying your product and installing it in homes that you're living as well, right? The doomsday clock is, is something that uh, the pushback I get from folks, it's interesting. I've had some conversations with folks working at manufacturers and distributors that come from other industries. And they're like, yeah, got it. Yeah, it happened in our industry. It's mm -hmm. why I'm here right now, right? Like there's less and less work over there. So they're in other industries. And one fellow said to me, Doug, he's like, I don't know if you ever heard this old analogy, but it's almost like the industry is the frog sitting in the pot of water and someone just turned the burner on and they're gonna boil it to death and not know it, right? If you take a boiling pot of water and throw a frog in it, it's going to try and jump out as fast as it can, right? Because it's hot, right? So the 71% of our industry that hasn't adopted it yet, those are the folks that, that I fear for, right? I want to make sure that they are, they're getting the message so that they too can grow and accelerate. Because it isn't the doomsday clock isn't the end of the world. It's just that the, the platform that we all exist on is going to transfer to technology. And once it does... Once you have a technologically based platform that can be updated and equipped and altered very fast and quickly, you start to see that rapid growth come into the industry as well. So it's with optimism that I want to leave us and not on the doomsday clock and the fear of it. But that's happening. And I think we want to make sure that folks are getting the message to adopt the software and get on the new platform that the industry is moving to, because those that do are going to accelerate, I think, even faster. So and we've seen that, too. We've seen in our data, the contractors using our software, they don't grow like the first year and then level off. They grow and grow and grow and grow mm -hmm. and grow. They keep on growing. They open more locations. They just keep growing. So, you know, that's what, that's what, that's what fueled my idea for the doomsday clock. I was like, how long is this going to go on for before it ends, right? I, I went from when is it going to start to the other side. I started thinking about when is it going to end because I'm in this day in, day out, right? But I think a lot of the industry is still on the side of like, well, when's it going to start? When's it's really going to make an impact? And it's it's already here. Yeah, I was going to say it's already started. You have two and a yeah. half years before you're completely in the minority of market share if you're not adopting this technology. The doomsday clock is already kind of – it's ticking, right? Because those right. companies that have adopted technology and efficiencies and this new model, as you said, they're starting to get – a stronger and stronger hold on this neighborhood. Then it becomes this side of town. Then it becomes this town. Then it becomes this area. And all of a sudden, if you're right. not using technology and being efficient, you're getting pushed further and further into the purview. And then they say, hey, you don't have any more market share. You want to come work for me? And it all right. starts with something as simple as using technology to become more efficient. You don't want to be that frog sitting in the pot getting hotter and hotter under the collar. Don't be in that 71%. And we're not saying 
it's an easy transition. We're not saying it's going to happen overnight, but if you're not using technology right now, in the next two and a half years, most of your competition is going to go blown right by you because they're going to be using it. So start the conversation with whether it be, if you're an owner, start it with, you know, all of your managers. If you're a manager and you see that your company is not adopting it, start having a conversation with the owner about, we need to be doing this because you don't want the clock to tick to zero without at least having the conversation and, and trying to get on board with technology. So get in touch with your TM. You can start having the conversations about what you'll need to prepare. And then we can get you in touch with someone like Pazerware and get you, you know, slow that clock down. You'll stop hearing the ticking once you're on this new technological platform. Yeah. Yeah. And Matt, one closing thought you mentioned doing the transition, right? The advancements in, in technology for the transition onto a software, but we've spent millions of dollars transforming the way we bring existing data over to the point where when we started, it would take us six months to onboard somebody's data, right? And get them up and running. Now, if you're on QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online, we just sync the QuickBooks. It's done overnight, right? Some of our other legacy softwares out there, we know how to get the data out of those. We've seen so many of them, right? That you can transition your data in a week, maybe two weeks at the tops. So the transition period of like, oh, I'm going to switch my software. It's going to take me six months. We had folks sign up this summer, do it in a matter of days, right? And then instantly you start to make that impact. Now you might not use the full breadth of all the technology to start. We understand that. What we've done is we've built an onboarding process where we can start where you want to start. Mm-hmm. Just want to start with a few things, schedule dispatch, right? Get my guys in the field, the mobile app, see where they're going, do those types of things. You can start small and grow, but we've really worked hard. You mentioned COVID before. We were locked in our houses. All we did was redevelop and redevelop mm-hmm. and redevelop, and we've got the software so much faster, so much e- user-friendly. I mean, the the app we've now built with Next, Next Done Technology, we called it, right? So you do one page, hit next, do the next page, hit next, next, you got, you're done. Like simple for a technician to follow that workflow out in the field and execute it. Absolutely. And thank you, Doug, and your team for, again, supporting this area so well and for the conversation. This is one of many conversations we're going to be having with the folks over at Pazerware over the next couple of months. So stay with us here on Tor Stock throughout the next few months. We're going to continue to have conversations like this. But for now, we want to thank Doug for coming on. We want to thank all of you out there for tuning in. Remember, don't be that frog in the water and get caught with the doomsday clock ticking to zero. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora. You can find us anywhere you can find a podcast. Just search Tor Stock. Following on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn using the hashtag Tor Stock. And as always, catch all of our podcasts right on our website or on our app sgtourist.com backslash tourist podcast or click right on that podcast icon. I want to thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Tourist.